Are you having a bad cold and high fever and you are afraid to go to the doctor because you think you have a coronavirus? Yeah, I mean, you can have fever, but not necessarily all type of fever is associated with coronavirus infection. So you really need to know that when you are affected by the coronavirus and what is the confirmatory test that you are affected by the coronavirus. So when you go to the clinic and if the doctor suspects that you are affected by the virus, he would allow you to do a test which is called real-time PCR test from your blood samples or your sputum samples. But before that, let us understand what they would actually check. So coronavirus has a RNA as its genetic material. And from its RNA, there is an open reading frame A and open reading frame B, which codes for the replicase, which is absolutely essential for its replication and its life. Other than that, there is another protein which is encoded by the genome, which is known as E protein. So both these proteins are very important for viral propagation. So your doctor would actually check whether few of these coding regions are present in your blood sample or sample of your sputum. So he would ask you to do a real-time PCR-based test. So let us look at what is the test. So your bodily sample, such as sputum or blood, would be collected. From there, RNA would be extracted. Now, from your cells, your blood cells, your sputum, you would get a lot of RNA which is common to you. But if you are infected with the virus, you would also have the viral RNA shown here in yellow. And next, these RNAs would be actually converted to cDNAs or complementary DNAs using reverse transcriptase PCR. You can see the viral DNA would also be, viral RNA would also be converted to a cDNA. Now, you want to amplify them in order to understand better whether you have it or not. And that can be done by real-time quantitative PCR. Let me tell you in brief what real-time PCR is. Real-time PCR use a dye called cybergreen, which is not fluorescent when it is unbound to any DNA. But when it binds to DNA, it fluoresce. Now, in PCR step, we know the particular sequence of interest gets amplified. And once the sequences are amplified, more of these free cybergreen molecules would bind to the DNA and start fluorescing. As a result, over time with the amplification process, the fluorescence also rise. Checking the quantitative value of fluorescence, we would get to know that whether a particular RNA of choice is present or not. If present, how much it is present. So all this information can be provided using this kind of assay. So taking samples from a person who is infected or suspected to be infected and from a control person who is not infected or proved to be uninfected, you can have a quantitative estimation that you are infected by the virus or not. I hope this video was informative and at the end of the day, the clinician would check for the fold enrichment of these viral mRNAs in your blood sample or in your sputum sample. And if they see significant amount of enrichment, that means that you are affected. So I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up and keep on watching. Thank you.